and welcome to the Kart Championship 2024, the championship that incorporates Bambinos, Cadets and Juniors. Yes, all under 16s racing all the time here at Wilton Mill. It is a fabulous event and a fabulous start this season and so much to talk about as Karting Live TV branches out into the Kart Championship. It's absolute honour and privilege actually as everyone at Karting Live TV very excited about the, the Kart Championship season. And you know what, Nick? This is where the junior categories, if they're just starting out, you start at club level, this is where you want to be. Your first experience of a national level championship. And this year, even more exciting. All right, the car championship with all of those classes has been going for some years now. But this year, we're under the, uh, the authority of the MSUK, the Motorsport Association in the UK. This is an MSUK championship now. And that, for everyone concerned, is a big step. And it kind of gives it a little bit more. Does it give it a little bit more credit? I'm going to say it does. I think you should. Anyway, enough of us postulating what it gives, because Joe's going to go and find out exactly what's happening. Talking to the great and possibly the good, and possibly, if he gets it right, one of the most famous people here. But who knows? Find out by watching the rest of this paddock walk with Joseph Bradley. This young man is the son of, in my world, a very famous racing driver. This is Felix Tandy. And more commonly, I'm used to interviewing his dad when he gets out of his Porsche prototype at Le Mans. Uh, but Felix here, it's your first race weekend, isn't it, Felix? Yeah. That's quite exciting stuff, isn't it? Yeah. What do you think so far? Good. Yeah. How quick is this cart of yours? Uh, same speed as the Coma. Right, because your cart's a bit different, isn't it? This cart here is the Might E, and I say Might E, emphasising the E. It's an all-electric cart. And hey, you, Felix, you think this is as quick as the corner or quicker? Quicker, because it's got better power speed off the corners. Right, and you're not afraid of the speed at all, are you? No. Do you think when you grow up you'll be quicker than your dad? Maybe. I think you will. Talking to dad, Nick, let's get Nick in. Uh, Nick, it's your weekend off, so where else would you be but at a racetrack? Exactly. Are uh, you keeping in touch with what's happening in the World Endurance Championship or not at all? No, I did find, I, I, I followed the qualifying yesterday. We didn't get to watch it because we were here to practicing, but um, yeah. yeah, going well for Porsche. Yeah, Good yeah stuff. Ab absolutely, boards well for you. Um, here you are with Felix, first race weekend, um, but this is what it's all about, and the car championship brings that. It's what we call dad and lad karting, and you're actually getting your hands dirty, aren't you? Well, yeah, I mean, when I was his age, um, I hadn't started racing, but when... You know, for a lot of people to be able to go and race, you have to do it yourself. And you know, yeah. this is what we grew up when I was when I was his age doing. So, um, I think it teaches them a lot to be able to figure out how to make the carts fast and how they work. And you know, whatever form of motorsport you're in, it, I think it gives an interest. So, yeah, it's great. I mean, the whole championship, um, what they put on is is excellent. And uh, and we've even got a bit of sunshine coming out of Wilton Mill. Yeah, so we, we, we ordered that. We ordered that. Something you said to me yesterday, Nick, was you went for the electric cart, the Might E cart, because of the simplicity. What exactly do you mean by that? Um, so we've run um, in the Coma class before, not in this championship, but um, you know, in some practice and some single event races last year. Um, it's more. It's a lot more time consuming. So to be on the pace. Um, you know, you, you don't just simply go and buy an engine from the UK supplier, bolt it on the car and go racing. It's, right. it's, right. Uh, it's, it's far more involved and, it, and mainly the time involves to, you know, develop the whole engines and, and yeah. you don't just have one engine and the expense into it, if you want to run at the top level, it's, it's interesting because of the engineering challenge and don't get me wrong, we like an engineering challenge, mm. but I have a lot of other stuff on. Um, you know, I get some help from my guys, luckily in the workshop from, from JTR, yeah. uh, which is where, you know, the car is based because it's a mile away from where we live. Right. So, you know, the time involved with the electric yeah. kit, you literally, everyone has the same and it puts the emphasis back on the driver. Right. So you don't have to worry about engine tuning. You don't have to worry about who spent more money and got more engines um, to be able to go quick. You focus simply on the driver which is what I think it should be all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because everyone has the same, the same power, um, it's always monitored the same. And you know, there's, no, there's no fussing around. You don't have to change jets in the morning yeah. to when it's hot yeah. in the afternoon. Yeah. You charge it up before the day, it runs all day. And uh, yeah, the, the, 
the, the girls and boys get to go racing together. It's great. It takes away all those variables and you just we just focus on Felix. Now, Felix, we know your dad's a professional racing driver. Does he help you and advise you on how to drive the kart? Yes. Yeah. Is he very useful? Yes. You don't listen, though, do you? <laughs> of he your dad. Dad's got no credibility, though, really, has he? No. No, exactly. So you've been out practicing already. It was a little bit damp. Um, how are you finding the conditions? Is it a bit tricky? No. You, you handled it okay? Yeah, it's full dry. Oh, really? So you found the, the, you found the dry line? Yeah. Right, okay. What are you hoping to uh, achieve this weekend? Are you going to win? Try and get pole. Try and get pole. That's the spirit. He's certainly got the tandy spirit, hasn't he? Felix, I wish you all the very best of luck. And keep your dad right, will you, mate? Keep him right. Mike Max is a massive part of the uh, car championship. And Freddie Blackshaw here, he's a, he's a beginner to this. I saw Freddie race at Warden Law in the Spring Series a few weeks ago. But here we are, big national championship this time for you, Freddie. You excited? Yeah. Yeah, how excited? One to ten. Twelve. Twelve, Freddie's excited. Now, Freddie, you're running a black number plate with your numbers on it. What does that mean? I'm a novice driver. Right, so you're a beginner? Yeah. So how many races have you done? It's hard to say, but I have just begun. Yes, so this we've just been talking to your dad. This is only your third race on the Micromax. Yeah. Yeah. Can you remember that? Third race. Yep. And what did you race last year? Bambino. Yeah. How different is this Micromax car to your Bambino from last year? Like, loads. Is it? Yeah. Right, what, what exactly? Like. Is it faster? Way faster, mm -hmm. more exciting, mm. and more bigger. It's a bit so the cart is bigger. Yeah. So do you find that's a bit tricky than getting through those little gaps? Yeah, I'd say it is, but I'll probably figure it out. Well, I'm sure you will. Have you been to Wilton Mill before? Uh, yeah, in my Bambino I have, yeah. and this is now my second time. Is it really different though when you get on the track with, even though you've been here before? In this Micromax cart, is it is it does that make the track really different? Uh, I wouldn't say so. No, so you know the way around. Yeah, but in the wet, um, it's nearly different. Right. How great is it to be with a big team like ST? Really excited because I've got one of my pals that I used to race against in Bambino. Right. Who's that then? Jamie Walsh, right there. Ah, right. Yes. So being part of the team, do you sort of share? sort of uh, experience of what the track conditions and stuff like that? Yeah, when it's dry first corner, you should be flat out and it's really easy. And then in the wet, you just turn to the outside and hit the curbs. Right, and do you, do you tell each other that information? No, we've got John, our coach, and he just tells us all about it on the track walk. Right, now John, John's been around ages, hasn't he? He's been here forever, hasn't he? Yeah. So he knows a lot. Do you learn a lot from him? Yeah. Yeah. When I've just started and now he knows a lot. Yeah. So I'll probably get used to it. Is your mechanic any good? Uh, yeah, sometimes he makes problems. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't, isn't your mechanic also your main sponsor as well? Yeah, yeah, he has got his own garage. All right, so we let him off a bit. So yeah. does he do MOTs? Uh, I don't know. All right, I'll ask him. I need a car testing. Freddie, wish you all the very best of luck, mate. Thank you. It's only your third race, so, you know, as long as you enjoy it, that's the main thing. Thank you. Brilliant. Freddie Black. We're going to have a look at the Junior Primo class. Now, this is a class of junior karting that's pretty much unique to the car championship. Yes, it's a junior Rotax kart, chassis, engine, exactly the same as what we're going to see in the Junior Rotax class. But the Junior Primo class is slightly different. And Ewan Stevenson here, who's going to run the 51. Ewan, um, you are 13? Uh, 14. 14, right. So the Junior Primo is there to bridge that gap before yeah. you have to race with the, the big lads, I suppose, yeah. in the Junior Rotax. Am I right in that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Tell us a little bit about um, what brought you to Junior Primo and why that suits you. Uh, junior Primo was sort of like there because last year I did Junior Rotax and there was quite a lot of mending because everything really went a bit, it was very rough. Yes. So this year we decided to go down to here where it's a lot more friendly, it's right. like more newer car yeah. people associate around so it like molds you into like a better driver ready for yeah, junior rotax so you're going to gain some really good experience on the same kit yeah. for when you move into junior rotax as a as a 15 year old next season or are you thinking about maybe later on in this season 
Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the plan? Yeah. 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 That yeah. is the plan. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about the cart then. Am I right in thinking there is absolutely no difference between this cart and the cart running in Junior Rodax? Yeah, there is no difference. It's exactly the same cart, chassis, engine, everything's the same. Um, have you raced in the car championship before with these people? Uh, yes, I did it last year yeah. with Junior Rotex, yeah. Right, this year, MSUK, mm. to a sanctioned event. Um, does that kind of give it a bit more credibility from where you are? Yeah, it gives it a lot more credibility. Like, so just more credentials, basically. Yes, yeah, yeah you're really... I mean, it's a proper national series yeah. now, and it's certainly worth winning. Mm. Uh, where, where are you in the field exactly, you in this so far this weekend? Uh, I uh, according to times, yeah. I think I'm more to the front, basically. Right, okay. Yeah. So that boards well. Time qualifying coming up very shortly. Yeah. This goes out to a race date on Sunday, so all of that will be history. Where will you be pleased with in time qualifying on the grid? Uh, top 10, basically. Right. Yeah, just yeah. aiming for that top 10. Yes. Yeah, that's the spirit. And this is uh, another example of, of entry level karting on a national level, if you like, because your mechanics, your dad. Yeah, yeah. You and you and your dad come here. You do every all the work, all the packing, all the all the setting up. How well do you guys work together? Then you're the driver. He's relying on you to tell him what yeah. to do regarding the cart. I would imagine. Mm, yeah. So, dad just sets it up to my feedback and then tries to like build on that to like make the best cart possible. Yeah. Yeah. And does he get that? Do you just get that? A lot of the time, yeah. Yeah, if you get into the top 10, but you're doing the right job. You and I wish you all the very best of luck, and uh, hopefully you'll have a great weekend, because that's what it's all about, isn't it? Having a great weekend. Where you come is just added bonus. Thanks, guys. The car championship in 2024 is slightly different insofar as it comes under the MSUK sanctioning governing body, which makes it very credible. And just to add to that credibility for this championship, this gentleman here, Ryan White, there's a reason he's carrying the number one, guys. That's because he's the Honda Cadet British champion. Ryan, uh, here you are at the car championship carrying the number one. That must be a very proud thing for you and your dad, Paul, to be carrying that number one, is it? Yeah, it feels great. Uh, it started off being just me and him going around the country, and now it's a national level racing. Yeah, what's it? So you've had you've you've, you've carried the number one now for for a little while haven't you and you're going to carry it for the rest of the season here we are in march does that give you a great feeling does that help with the confidence knowing that you you know you've got a, a major championship behind you um yeah it really does yeah. also i know lots of drivers because of my past years and experience yeah. so yeah it does and you know those drivers out on the track and the kind of things they're going to do you mean yeah 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 so what's brought you the british champion in honda cadets to the car championship. Why do you want to race in this championship? Um, well, to be honest, I'll do any championship I can. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm doing the British Championship, Ultimate Karting Championship, right. CKC. Um, I'm doing as much as I can. I love go karting, and I'll do everything, everything that I can do. Yes, I thought that was going to be uh, Ryan's answer, actually. Um, Ryan, you're with Project One this weekend. Like I think you've just, just mentioned there, it was always you and your dad who came karting. Um, but your dad's still your chief mechanic, isn't he? Does, so, so where does Project One come in? Where does the team come in? Because your dad's the one tending to the cart. Are they? The, what are they there for? Um, well, Charlie, um, he help. He does track walks with us, right. and uh, he he gives us like he tells us um, what we've done wrong and uh, things to improve on. Uh, Piers tells us the setup and everything. Uh, he also gives advice on what I've done wrong. Um, right. That's. And also when you do it right. Yeah. Yeah, that's the spirit. Now then. Carrying that number one, everybody expects you to win. So how do you handle that pressure? Um, well, I don't, I don't mind pressure, really. Um, yeah. In the car, I just think of what's going to happen after the race, really, mm -hmm. and not what's going to happen in the race. Um, I think, Ryan, I know the answer to the question I'm about to ask you, right? So I'm going to ask you this. What will you be happy with on Sunday afternoon? First. I knew he was going to say that. Ryan, best of luck, mate, and uh, give my regards to your dad, Paul, when, when, he, when he appears, um, and have a great weekend. Thank you. So the car championship has been going for a few years now. However, 2024 sees, I think, a major change, and that change comes from the, this, this series now being governed by the MSUK, who are the governing body of all motorsports in the UK. And this man here, Dan Parker. Dan, welcome to the car championship. You are the MSUK's head of karting, and... From where I'm standing, the MSUK are slowly taking back 
involvement, I'm not going to say ownership because it's not, but it's involvement in a lot of the major IKR championships. For IKR, I mean independent kart racing championships. You're taking over or you're sanctioning the UKC. Here you are sanctioning the kart championship. That must give you a lovely warm feeling from your position. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great. And um, certainly... Yeah, certainly Darren Beavers um, has been around for a long, long time. You know, I, certainly I've been aware of his championships um, probably for the last 10, 15 years. Some of the, the Bambinos that are racing at the highest level now all started in Darren's championships. Yeah. Uh, and he's done a really, really good job. Of course, he's always run independently. Yes. Um, and he's done a really, really good job uh, with that and built up some, some great numbers. We're here this weekend with over two, nearly 200 drivers, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, so he'd done a great job. And it kind of it just felt like the right time for... for mm -hmm. Um, I think us as an organisation to make some strategic decisions a couple of years ago, things like the class restructure, uh, where we, we opened up the ability to run different classes, um, some of which are racing here this weekend. Um, and yeah, Darren's kind of championship, I think, was you know, turning into something that was, you know, really, really popular. Mm. Um, but I think Darren also wanted maybe to look at some of the benefits of running the Motorsport UK with yeah. the insurances, all of the mechanics that are here this weekend that are racing that aren't um, parent mechanics that are that mechanic for their children, yes. they're all DBS checked yeah. Um, yeah. and they've all got a license, which is something I think that's also, you know, absolutely paramount that we, we take into account the, the, the world that we live in now. Yes. Um, yeah, and uh, it, it's, I'm really excited, you're absolutely right. I'm, it's a very proud moment actually to be standing yeah. here to have, uh, have Darren running under, under permit. Delighted that uh, he's got so many drivers, and uh, also we've got the electric bambinos here as well. Yes. So it's, it's yeah. great. We've got a really good spread of people. Yeah. I spent yesterday walking around in the paddock, having a having a chat to everybody. There's a really good vibe, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's uh, if you like for, from my side, mm. we we've, we've made the the strategic changes to get these championships sort of mm. to um, be embraced by us, get them part of our community, offer a pathway forward to other championships, maybe yeah. even to the BKC at the, the top, the yes. sort of British championship. But the, it, it really is, um, the hard work starts now, if you like, because it's, yeah. it's up to us now to work together to, to make sure that the, the events run um, and that we, we can deliver on what, you know, what we've got to deliver on, and that's giving governance and safety and regulations and all the boring stuff, really. Well, well no, but it's important. It might be boring, but it, it's important. Certainly from where I'm standing, because uh, I'm a fan with a microphone more than anything, Dan, the car championship I see as that transition from club karting, racing at your local track with your local club, and really is an entry-level national series yeah. before you start looking at the Vera Tills British Championship and other series. Is, would, am, I, am I right in that view? Yeah, and, and, and it, it, it shows there's this sort of shifting change as well in, in terms of the, the karting community that I think probably if you go back 25, 30 years, you'd, you'd probably go karting with your parents. Um, you, more than likely, one of your parents had some sort of knowledge of how to change a carburetor and what yeah. the differences were with four stroke and two stroke and how to you know how to get a car to operate and engineer it mm. nowadays with the the changing world that we live in we've yeah. got less and less people that perhaps have got that understanding about karting engineering carburation all the all the sort of stuff that you you need to know to make a cart go quickly they've and gotten a bit more technical as well since i you know since i yeah, was involved yeah, they, they've got a bit more technical so that now has led to people perhaps going with a team yeah. and the team's have um, an ambition to race maybe more nationally. Yeah. There's still plenty of club racing going on mm -hmm. and that's very much part of our plan as well that we, we embrace that, but that there is this kind of demand from people to, to go and race and a desire at different tracks. We're one of the best tracks in the country at Will Mill this weekend um, and uh, that they can pick and choose the races that they want to go and race in, yeah. in a championship. As you say, yeah. it, it's got, but this championship in particular has got a really good yeah. sort of feel to it when I'm in the paddock about, you know, yeah. there, there's an excitement about them coming to race at Wilton Mill or PFI or, you know, with other, other yeah. tracks that they've now got available to them. The other thing I think is important about, about the car championship this year is the Might E Bambino class. Mm -hmm. I mean, once again, the MSUK is showing themselves at the forefront of motorsport technology. The, the, Bam, the Might, Might E, I would imagine our viewers by the time this interview goes out, will be fully appraised of what we're talking about. We're talking about electrically propelled carts here, and that really is at the forefront of technology in motorsport. Yeah, I, I, again, it was it was important. We, we selected the right class for us to look at to start, and it mm. made sense to, to do the Bambino class first because obviously you've got a much 
lighter powertrain, you've got much lighter, smaller cart, which means you can need smaller batteries. Yeah. Um, you know, there are still some limitations as you move up through the, the ranks, but we're just starting that journey now with the Bambino and with Mighty E. Uh, and those guys have done a great job in promoting the, the class. I think we've got 18 maybe on yeah, the grid yeah, this good weekend, grid, good grid. Um, which, is, which is great. Yeah. And, and, and again, that kind of demonstrates, I think, the changing um, need that, that the parents and competitors have got because the uh, the Coma C50 engine, although very well established, um, is a two-stroke engine, and you know it, it can be uh, problematic to set up sometimes because yeah, yeah, uh, it's a two-stroke. Uh, and this gives opportunity to people to just turn up um, using an electric powertrain. The scrutineers have got an app so they can check everything on the cars, make sure they're all absolutely uh, the same. Um, and yeah, it's it's proving really, really popular. Yeah. We're really looking forward to uh, to watching it grow. Yeah, absolutely. So as head of karting, Dan, is it true that your next weekend off is actually Boxing Day and Christmas Day? Uh, yeah, I was supposed to be off this weekend. <laughs> Were uh, you really? I didn't, um, I, that, didn't, that didn't come off. But um, yeah. yeah, no, it was really important to uh, to come here and support these guys for this weekend. Yeah. And uh, yeah, not sure what we're at next weekend, but I'm very fortunate I've got a, a job that I love doing. So. Living the dream, I think it's called, Dan. Absolutely, yeah. living the dream. Dan Parker, thank you very much for talking to us. Thanks, guys.